Hi, my name is Steve Houston. Welcome to my channel. Again, if you're brand new here, we discuss all things related to financial services, their products, the compensation plans. We compare the IMOs, which seems to be the number one question that I get all week long. And the standard is where I can supply third-party documentation because we know third-party documentation beats any conversation to back up my opinion or what some people call my rhetoric. I will supply that to prove my point. At the end of the day, it's all about where you feel like you would fit best. It's not about a recruiter's opinion. You evaluate the differences and you decide what's the best fit for you. And that's what this video is all about today. Now, before we begin, I wanna make sure I point out these opinions on these videos are mine. They're not anybody else's. They're not my IMOs, they're mine. These opinions generate over the years in this industry are all from making bad decisions, seeing things as they really are once you get behind that curtain of the IMO. And then what the truth is about trying to get out and move on to an IMO of your choice once you've decided that it's not a fit for you. This week's video is about how to compare those IMOs when you're considering joining the mortgage session and the final expense industry. Now, I continue to get this as the number one question. Every text, every email, every phone call I get, it goes like this. Steve, what is the best IMO for me? And how do I compare and what to look for in an IMO? As you know, it should not be just about the IMO that you're considering. It should also be about who you're signing up with. Are they recruiters just looking to recruit you? I get that all the time. Ask them, how much production are you doing? If they say, hey, I'm just a recruiter, I don't sell, in my opinion, they're playing the get rich quick lottery system and you should run away as fast as you possibly can, like hang up the phone, right? Or are they leading from the front by putting their names on applications just like they're asking you to do? If they're not really selling insurance themselves and they're telling you to do something that they're not willing to do for themselves, again, in my opinion, then I would simply move on. These type of folks are not leaders teaching you a proven system on how to succeed. They're simply, as I said, playing the lottery system with you as their ticket. I'm not sure about you, but I got a big issue with that. Okay, so let's move on. So we're going to deal with on this video, how do you compare? What are the things that you should look for? I've covered this multiple times on other videos. I'm trying to keep it as simple as I possibly can so you can get a yellow pad and a pen and let's consider the things you should be looking for in an IMO. And you will see it's pretty simple to narrow down your options and cut through the BS the recruiters are trying to tell you. What I have on the board here are some key items I believe you must evaluate when considering the IMO you sign with. Some of them, I believe, are critical to your success in this business. So don't overlook them. And as I go through them, I'm going to put a big red mark which I consider knockout items. In other words, if they don't have them, if the IMO doesn't have this, I would move on. Since not having it 99% of the time will mean you're going to fail out of the business and waste your time. So let's get started and take a look at some key value-added services that I believe you should look for in an IMO. And if I were comparing the three IMOs and you want to ask your recruiter. So the number one is owns the lead program. The key word there is do they own their own lead program? You have to ask them, do you own a mailing house? Do you own your lead program? Or are you selling third-party leads? Because if they're selling third-party leads, they cannot control the quality or the quantity of the leads in your area. Okay, very, very important. It's all about lead flow and activity in this business. Okay, so let's get started. IMO number one does not own their own lead program. They're selling third-party leads. Big problem, okay? IMO number two does own their own lead program. IMO number three owns their own lead program in their mailing house, right? They own the mailing house. And they had the technology to make sure that it's a world-class integrity-based lead program where the lead is removed when it's sold a product by another agent. That's what you want. So that's a big check mark. Now, world-class conversation. What we mean by world-class compensation is we're allowed to come in at a certain percentage, right? Let's just say it's 70%, and we can go all the way up to 100% or above, right? No recruiting required on our own pin, okay? Period. 
That's what I would consider world-class compensation. IMO number one, you come in at 60%, right? You can go to 80%, and then you can't go any further. They cap your income. Big problem. IMO number two, you start out at a very, very low contract rate, and you can only go up to about 60%, 70%, and that's it. No street-level commissions. So big problem, okay? IMO number three, you can come in at, at the 70%. You go up to 105, 110%, right? No recruiting required. And you get promoted every couple of months based on one thing, the amount of premium that you write with your pen. Big check mark. Home office support. Home IMO number one has home office support. You can call them on the phone. IMO number two has no IMO support. They refer you back to your upline. Big, big problem, okay? IMO number three has home office support open. On the phone, you can call any department you want for help, and it's either on the phone or on chat during business hours and extended business hours. Direct carrier pay, this is a big one. Direct IMO number one, you get paid by the IMO. Two at three X's. <laughs> That's a big problem. IMO number two, you do get paid by the carrier. IMO number three, you get paid by the carrier. All right, so we're gonna move on to technology. This is a big one because it affects a few different things that you and I need in order to succeed. One is lead quality. So technology, do they have any kind of technology? Okay, so IMO number one has no technology. Other than maybe the OPT system where you can go in and log in and buy your leads, which is a third party vendor, they really have no technology that you can log into a dashboard, you know, where you can monitor your business, you can communicate with the IMO, you can communicate with the carriers, you can check on your pendings, that kind of technology, right? So they have none. IMO number two has some technology. In other words, you can log in and get your leads and you might be able to get some training. So we're gonna give it a, a half of a check mark, okay? You need to ask to see this kind of stuff because they all tell you, oh yeah, we got technology. In other words, you have a dashboard, you can log in, track your pendings, you can see all your pendings. If you're building your own agency, you can see that production, you can view your application. If there's something missing, the IMO can contact you for additional documents and then you can resubmit it through that same dashboard. You're not chasing that stuff. Trust me on this. If you're going to be any kind of producer at all, technology will allow you to run your business in 10, 15 minutes a day maximum rather than calling all these different carriers, waiting on hold, trying to get to an underwriter and find out why the policy hasn't been issued, what's outstanding, how do I get it to you, What's holding it up? If you're writing any kind of business at all, that can become a full-time job. Because remember, we're not dealing with just one carrier. Many times we're dealing with 10 or 15 or 20 carriers, and you could have a policy to every one of them, right? And if you're building an agency, it's, it's exponentially more of a problem. Make sense? So this carrier here has all that stuff. You can log in. You can track your business. You can communicate with the IMO. They have carrier calculators, so you can run your rates. They, you can download your apps. They also have training all this stuff in one portal. So in a matter of a few minutes, you can find out what you've submitted, right? What's been paid, what's still missing requirements, supply that information and get that application from submission to commission. Technology is great and they shouldn't charge for it because again, these IMOs are making money on your production, right? So these are value added services that they provide is their cost of doing business and attracting you as an agent to that IMO. So I'm gonna give this number three uh, you know, three check marks because it's huge, right? The next one is production bonuses. This is just, again, part of having a world-class compensation plan. It really should be in the same category, but do they give you production bonuses? Let's just say uh, IMO number one does have some bonuses. So we're going to give that a check mark. IMO number two does have a bonus program. IMO number three has production bonuses, both for you and if you're building an agency, they have manager bonuses as well. Okay, so I'm gonna give it two check marks. So number seven is the ownership option. Do they have ownership? Really should be more or less profit sharing, equity sharing. Are they allowing you to participate in a bonus program or equity sharing of the overall success of the IMO, right? So in other words, are you able to get yourself in a position where you get paid a percentage of the company's overall success? Not just business that you create through your agency, but the whole IMO. Now that's not easy to find, but the, it is out there, okay? Okay, so ownership option. Now IMO number one does not have that. IMO number two has a form of private sharing. IMO number three, again, has a great private sharing, equity sharing program. So again, two check marks. 
management opportunity. Kind of goes back to number seven. Can you build your own agency inside this IMO? IMO number one allows you to do that, but here's the problem. They have everybody coming in at high contract rates. If everybody's coming at the high contract rate, where's the money going to be made? Early on, the way you get compensated for your time is the difference between your contract rate and your agent's contract rate, this space in here. So if you're at uh, 80%, they're at 70, you would make a 10% override on the agents coming into your agency. Look, nothing's for free in life. If someone's gonna help you succeed and train you, they're gonna get a percentage point, which is why it's so vitally important that you can move up the comp plan, right? 70, 75, 80, with no recruiting, because you can move up the comp plan based on nothing more than the value that you bring to the IMO, which is your premium. This is why it's so important that you get able to move up the comp plan based on your own pants. So you come in at 70%, you can go to 75%, 80, 85, 90, because on your own pin, you can move yourself up the comp plan and get promoted so that this number is higher. And with a fair and equitable comp plan, everybody's coming at the same level right? There's no backroom deals going on. And because there's no recruiting required, you can control your promotions and your contract rate is in your control. And then as you build an agency, your spread is larger, okay? But really building an agency is long-term vision, not short-term vision. Okay, so IMO number two has forced recruiting. So there's a management opportunity, but I'm going to give it a half of a check mark because you only control being able to go up to about the 85% rate on your own pen, and then from there you're forced to recruit. So yes, there's a management opportunity, but they're limiting your income, okay? So this should be red, a half a check mark, really. I have on number three, no recruiting required. You can go up to 110%, right, on your own pen, so you can control your contract rate. Number nine, high starting contract, okay? I have on number one, has a very high starting contract, okay? I have on number two, has a very low contract rate. So we're gonna give that a big X. IMO number three has a very fair starting contract rate, but again, they'll allow you to go all the way up the comp plan with no recruiting required. So I'm gonna give that one three check marks. The most undervalued item on this list is number 10, which is the agency level support and training. Because honestly, most of you haven't been able to find a place that will give you agency level support and training. And I mean, case by case, step by step, coaching, role playing, mentoring on the phone, things that matter. Phone script, product selection, in-home presentation, and in-home help that you, that you can call and get help should you have questions in the home so you can get that family protected, get your application, and you can get paid. Very few people have that kind of availability where they're available to you all day long when you're in the home and also strategize your cases with you so that you're prepared going in the home. You know, many of you don't know what that is because you've never seen it before. You're kind of thrown out there to the wolves, so to speak, with little or no training at all and no help on product selection, no one to help write an application if you do make a sale, right? You're just kind of winging it on your own. And that's why most people fail out of this business because they look at this thing as a sign-up deal, not a partnership deal, right? They're going to sign you up. If you make it, great. If you don't make it, no skin off their back because they're hiring a ton of people and someone will be a self-starter and will figure it out on their own. I don't like that. I despise it. And this is for all you people that didn't want me to put this video up this week about this subject because you're recruiters and you've never put your name on an application ever. And somehow you're convinced that that's the only way to do it or that's the ethical way of doing it. And it's not. I believe you have to leave the front. Nothing wrong with recruiting. Nothing wrong with building an agency. But you, if you're not willing to put your name on an application, you should not be building an agency. That's my opinion. Take it for its worth. I may lose some subscribers of that one, but that is what it is. Agency level support and training, there is none here. So we're going to give that a big X. Okay, because that really hurts you. Because, look, the IMO can provide you a lot of things, right? But that first 90 days, six months to a year, you need to learn the skills necessary to succeed in this business. There's a certain way to work these leads. And if you don't get the right coaching and the right mentorship and someone that's really in invested with your success, you're going to go through a lot of money, you're going to fail out, and you'll be gone. And that's, that's a tragedy, okay? So that's a big part right here. You really got to focus on this, this item right here, okay? I mean, step by step, be with you all on the way. I, IMO number two doesn't have any of that. IMO number three has all of that, okay? 15 hours a day. Why do I know that? Because that's what we do. 
Okay, we're on the phone. We're available to our agents when they're in the home. We know when they're in the home. They 911 us. We jump on the phone. We help them answer the questions. Our goal is to get that family protected, get that application. So when you walk out the door, you have a sale and you have a potential commission. And we help you with that. That's how we earn our stripes here at our agency. So I know it's available with us and it may be available with others, but it's something you should be looking at when you know these 10 items here are really key to your success. So look, so look, that's how you compare these IMOs. It's not very complicated to get out a yellow pad or a post-it note or whatever and you know, write these things down. And when you're talking to people, ask them. Look at the promotion guidelines. Find out what they have for technology. Find out what they do for the agents. Ask them, are you producing yourself? Are you out selling? Or are you just recruiting? Most of them will tell you. Some of them will be honest with you. Some of them won't be honest with you. You have to do a little more digging. But these are the things that you should be checking off. And then if you look at the big picture here, it's not very complicated to choose which one is best for you. But you might get hung up on this high contract over here. High contract. You know, they start you out very, very high. But look, they have, they do not own their own lead program. So a high contract with lousy or no leads at all, maybe they only have final expense or you can't get more recession, whatever. So what if you have a high contract? High contract, no leads equals broke agent. They, they have that going for them, but that's all they got going for them. They have no agency level support. They don't have any bonuses. They have little or no technology. They don't pay, the carriers don't pay you, the IMO does, right? They don't have world-class compensation. They start you at a high contract and you're done and they don't own their lead point, like I said. So that, I rule that one out. But many of you get stuck on that, the biggest head pick in the industry, which is the high contract. I'm on number two. They do own their own lead program. They force you to recruit or you can't be promoted past 80, 85%. So that's something you got to watch out for. So that's not world-class compensation. That's only there for the upline. Home office support, they have little or none. They do have direct carrier pay. They do have some technology. They do have production bonuses. They do have an ownership option, right? They, have a management they do not have a management opportunity. They do not have a high starting contract. And there is little or no agency level support. You go over here, it's probably a little bit one-sided because that's the one that we're with. But they have all of that stuff in spades. So, so that's about it. It's really features and benefits. That's what it is, right? And you can see very simply, if you write these things down, it's not that complicated. Maybe you won't get the biggest head pick in the industry by falling for one thing that they want to sell you on. Why they want to sell you on that? Because all these other things they know they don't have and it's not in your best interest. So they bring you over with a high contract, lousy leads or little or no leads, and you're stuck. So again, you got to have an exclusive, high quality lead program, industry leading compensation, and you have to have that agency level support. Someone that's going to be vested with you completely. Look, in this business, simply put, here's what we do. We call people that have asked us to call. We buy some leads, we make some dials, we book some appointments, we go through a product selection process, we run the appointment, we submit the application to the uh, carrier, to the underwriting department, and then we go back and we do it again. It's not a complicated business, but you've got to make a good choice here on the front end. More leads equal more contacts, equal more sits, equals more application, equals more commissionable premium, APV, annual premium volume, to the agent, which makes a very happy, successful agent. So I hope this video makes sense. Remember, the surest way to succeed is to be determined not to quit. Failing has to be an option, but quitting means you're quitting on yourself and probably one of the best opportunities ever to come your way. Take advantage of it. My contact information is in the description. Reach out to me on text, email, or phone. If I can help you in any way, I'm grateful that you're here. Thank you for being part of this channel, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.